Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. War is worse than hell, and the people in it are worse than the war. The only thing worse than all of that, a good person in a war. Written by Cal Bynes. The human strolled into the bar somehow without a care in the world. The bartender, warily taking his order as the volume in the bar lowered to a hush, quick whispers. The human slowly nursing each drink before a group of Buchan began moving over, him noticing it in the reflection of the glasses behind the bar. Taking a long, slow sip before putting down the glass and ordering another, he turned to the group behind him. So, human, what the hell are you doing here? The lead Buchan asked. Having a drink, he responded, matching the harsh stare as he sipped the new drink. If we weren't on the station, we would beat you to a pulp just like we are going to do once we get deployed. What do you think about that, human? The Bachan spat as he goaded the human. Behind him, the rest of his group hyping him up. I would guess you'd probably be right. Say, uh, you haven't been deployed, have you? You're all recruits, ain't you? The human asked, standing up after he finished the next drink putting the credits down for a round as he leveled with the group. Yeah, don't mean that we can't beat you out to a pub, the leader said, the confident voice faltering at Ed. You know what this tattoo means, friend, the human said, lifting up his sleeve as he grabbed the order of drinks. On his arm, a fist-sized tattoo, a steel box with blood-red angel wings adorning its side. The banner underneath only said, The First. The bar had a sun and chill run over it. The first. They were the first human drop pod crew. Their casualty on entry was atrocious, but those that made it through more than I made up for it on the other side. If you saw the first dropping, your fate was all but sealed. Don't worry, my fighting days are long behind me. All I'm here is for a drink and a tale if that's all right for you lot, the human said, moving over to the booth. The aliens cautiously following him. The bar listened intently. This is something my commander taught me back when I was like you. Hold gung ho to start killing the bad guy. It goes like this. People like to say that war is hell. That's wrong. War is war and so much worse. Because it's the innocent that are dragged into war. At least in hell you know why you're there. A kid doesn't know why they can't go to school anymore. Or why dad's not coming home. Why their sister cuts cough from constant black smoke? The human took a drink, seeing a glimpse of the now soured faces of those sitting with him. One of them beginning to say something before the human continued. A battle buddy of mine expanded on that saying. I think I figured out what's worse than war. The people in it. Cause half of the bastards don't care. They're just some dumb kids following orders. Or callous old fecks that have seen so much blood. It's like water for them. They don't care anymore, or they don't realize they need to care. Care about the poor bastards on the other side of the barrel. The human raised his glass, taking another swig, this time the alien slightly waiting. The last part, I've added myself. The worst thing I've found is the good ones. You see, there are only one or two reasons a good one gets into a war. Either they're protecting something, or they got nothing left to protect. The ones with something to protect will fight with principles. They will fight with honor because they have something to lose. They will do everything in their power to survive and to see the one thing again. But they will gladly die if it means they protect whatever they've got left. Another sip of the drink before he continued. The ones with nothing left to lose, they will rip and tear and scream their vocal cords out. They don't care about coming back. They don't care about winning. They just want to make you pay. They will put up a bomb vest. They will rip up IEDs. They will crash a starship into a planet. They will send a system supernova because they have nobody left to fight for. Only memories. And those memories, they go with them when they die. The human finished taking a final swig of the glass as he stood from the table. What your people have done, boys, that attack on the Zeknoff system. You don't have any regular people left. The only thing you've got left are the good ones who are going to be fighting. If I were you, I'd find some way to dodge that deployment. If not, 
I'll hope that the devil finds you before the good ones do, he said, giving a nod and tossing a crit chip with enough for another round of drinks. Hey, human, can I ask you something before you leave? One of the butcher spoke up. Shoot, the human said, turning around at the doorway. Which one are you? The butcher asked. Ah, me, I'm one of the tired ones, he said with a deep, sorrowful chuckle before he left the bar. End of story. Story number two. Only death, written by Dan and Angel. There is no hope of victory, huh? Only death. Why do they keep fighting? General Tolvik tried to fathom the human psyche as he glared at the ruined amphitheater, miles under the surface which was covered in the blood and gore. The fighting on Jackson's moon shouldn't have lasted this long. It shouldn't have happened at all. Once the space was cleared of any opposing fleet, the planets were supposed to surrender. It was the only safe option, as orbital bombardments would safely and easily kill anyone on or near the surface. Terrorism, skirmishes, and raids by those who refused to surrender were expected. But that was a minority and could be dealt with with a small army that focused on keeping a few key areas open for exploitation. After the war, things would be ironed out, deals made, and the citizens would be relatively peaceful, or they would be rounded up and dealt with. But Jackson's moon was in most planets. It was an airless moon that had been mined for over a century. The tunnels were seemingly endless, and after their fleet had retreated, the millions of humans living on the planet fled deep underground. That would have been acceptable. While the moon's resources would be nice, they weren't essential. What wasn't acceptable was how the humans had repeatedly shot several tons of iron ore at near light speed towards the shipyards in a nearby asteroid belt. The improvised weapon had destroyed a corvette and badly damaged a battleship that had been under repairs. After orbital bombardment resulted in only superficial damage to the moon, General Tolvik and his men were called in. For half a revolution around the sun, they had been fighting and dying in cramped tunnels of the moon. The humans were taking heavy losses, but his soldiers were taking more. As the humans used their mining experience and knowledge of the tunnels to run rings around them while using prodigious amounts of explosives. Now looking at the amphitheater, where the thousands of bodies lay, he wondered when the humans would realize that they couldn't win. He had a steady stream of reinforcements. They didn't. The last offensive had to have killed many of their soldiers. The humans were being bled dry. General, we have a prisoner. Tolvik motioned for the human to be brought to him. The soldier half carried a bloody and dazed human up to the small ramp. He looked at the small figure. It was filthy and its hair had grown long and wild during the war. Skinny, as all humans were. Now that they were rationing their food, but not gaunt. It had a pack on its back half full of energy clips. What surprised him the most was the human's age. But what are you doing here, child? He asked in the human's language. The child, who hadn't even reached puberty, looked at him, dazed and confused, but to fight. Giving soldiers clips so that we can kill you, it said. Its words slurred, making it hard to understand. Get this child to a medic and then to a camp hospital, he ordered. Watching the soldier carrying the child away, Tolvik shook his body in wonder. The humans cherished the children to a nearly insane degree, spoiling them far too much. Yet here they were sending them into battle. He looked over the amphitheater once more and wondered how many bodies belonged to children. There is no hope of victory here. Only death, he muttered. End of story. This is a special thank you to the one, the only, the legendary Erak Hino, who has become the only Tier 6 patron. I just want to thank the T5 patrons and channel members. Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Australia the Dreamer, Trigger95, Pudic Yol, Meridian117, Elysia, Jordan Buxborn, Angry Marine, Albarden Gasta, and Barky. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. 
There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.